All right. So the old way we did it was seeing what we could factor out of all four at once. But now what if we factor it by grouping and factor things separately? So let's have that red line between them. And we're gonna do the same thing here. It's just that now we only have to think about what's in one and two. So for example, now seven counts. Okay, that's cool. They both have one T. They both have two T's. They both have three T's. They both have four T's. They both have five T's. They both have six T's. And that's all. This last T is to be expected, right? Because up here, this had T to the seventh, this had T to the sixth. So we can get all six of the ones in number two, but only six out of seven of the ones in number one. Hope everybody's cool with that. And then S's, they both have one S. They both have two S's. And after that, number two has no S's left to give. So we'll cross that off. And meanwhile, over here with number two, number one doesn't have a three. So number two has that crossed off. So we can write this just the way we did before. What am I doing? There we go. Oops, I want it in black. So our outside, right, is the stuff in blue circles. So we have seven. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six T's. So seven times T to the sixth. And then one, two S's, so S squared. So we were able to factor out a lot more when we were just taking those two in consideration than we were originally when we had to take all four into consideration. And what's left of the first one, we have one T and three S's. And of the second one, we just have three. Oh, but this is a minus, right? Because of this. So, paradon. Okay. So, that was the first one. Now we can factor by grouping with the second one. So, let's see. They both have five. They both have one T. They both have two T's. They both have three T's. They both have one S. And that is all that they both have because there's nothing left for number three to have, right? Everything in number three is factorable. And I'll show you what to do with that. So number four has a two and a couple extra S's. So what we all have in common is five, three T's, so T cubed S. In other words, since we factored out everything in number three, everything in term number three is there. Now, what we have here to multiply by, when you factored out everything, you can just put a one because then 5t cubed s times one is 5t cubed s, which is what we want. Don't put a zero because then this will just disappear, right? When it gets multiplied by zero. So you put a one to keep when you factor out everything. And down here, one minus two S squared. So you might be thinking, okay, so, and that would not be an incorrect thought because truly what's it all about? Who knows? You can combine these two factored by grouping things 
into basically one long answer. And here's the thing about this, whatever I'm showing you. This is gonna feel anticlimactic at the end because for this problem, I'm gonna finish and be like, no reason, you can just do this if you want. <laughs> But the reason I decided to do it with this problem that we'd already done before is because doing it this way is helpful with the other kind of factoring that we are going to study after this. So I put this plus here between them because of the plus here. So essentially the first part is this factored and then I just say plus and then the other part factored, right? So if you were to multiply all these out and unfactor them, then this and this would be equivalent statements, all right? So, like I said, for this problem, there's not a particular strong reason to choose one method over the other, whichever you like better. Sometimes it's more satisfying to do it that second method because you can factor more out and that makes you feel accomplished if you're anything like me. Um, but, you know, whatever the work you're doing asks of you, right? But I talked about factoring groups because um, we're gonna use that for the next thing we do. Any questions on the factoring in groups that I just did? Okay, Guadalupe has no questions, awesome. Okay. So this might seem kind of random, but if you guys recall, a while back we did factoring with this X method. Back in the good old days, you have learned this before, I promise, um, where you might have had, and we did it with um, just things like Y equals X squared plus. 11x plus 24, okay? And who knows if you remember this, but there was this x method that we used. You did times in one place and multiplication in the other. And this lined up with, um, the general form y equals x squared plus bx plus c. What we said was that we added to make b and we multiplied to make c. So in our case here, b would be 11, whatever number is with the x, not x squared, but x. And c lines up with the constant, which in this case is 24. And this again is stuff we've done before. I'm leading up, I'm building up to this. So we have to look for two numbers that we want to fill these holes. And these two numbers, the same two numbers need to add to 11 and multiply to 24. So what we did then was think of numbers that multiply to 24 and then see which ones add to 11. Because there's infinity pairs of integers that add to 11, right? Because you could do 11 and zero, and then you could do 12 and negative one and 13 and negative two and so on, right? To like, a million and negative whatever a million minus 24 is. Um, yeah, so two and 12 is one pair that adds to 20, to multiplies 24. Uh, you always have the one, the identity, 
Um, anyone else want to give me two numbers that multiply to make 24? Mercedes said six and four. And three and eight. Awesome. So these are all the possible integers that multiply to make 24. Okay. So once you have that list, you can go through, change them to plus, and see which one adds to 11. So doesn't add to 11, doesn't add to 11, doesn't add to 11, adds to 11. And that means that three and eight are the numbers that we are looking for. Okay, and then I told you that once you have your three and eight, your factored quadratic would look like this. And it could be x plus three times x plus eight or x plus eight times x plus three, it doesn't matter. Two times three is the same as three times two. And this was your final answer. So hopefully you guys remember that factoring. But notice, I don't know if you guys have, if I've done this specifically with y'all with anything, but surely in other classes in the past, you've done this. Um, normally this general form here, where I have x squared plus bx plus c, the reason it starts with b is that normally the general form is ax squared plus bx plus c. That looks awful. Normally it's ax squared plus bx plus c. And I only worked with you so far on times when there wasn't an a or when a was one more accurately. Um, and so we just left that out. So today I want to talk about when a is something other than one because it changes a little bit what you gotta do. So, <clears throat> That's where we're gonna start getting into factoring by grouping and stuff. It all is gonna to come together, you'll see. But we're gonna keep the X method too, which is why I uh, did this pre-example first too. <laughs> okay, so let's see. First example. Did not mean there. Six X squared. Oops. Seven R minus three. Okay, so here's our first example. 6x six, six squared minus 7r minus 3. Ooh. Ooh, excuse me. So if you recall over here before we said add to b, multiply to c, right? Well, now that we have an actual number in there for a, that changes only a little bit. Now it's still add to b, but it's multiplied to whatever a times c is. So you can see you basically could have said that was the case from the beginning, but in all the others, a was one. So it was one times c, which is just c. So we didn't bother talking about a. So add to b and multiply to a times c. Is everybody okay? We're still feeling fearless, we can do this.
All right. So B, don't forget the sign here. B is negative seven. AC is six times, and then C, don't forget the sign, negative three. So six times negative three is negative 18. So from there, we're gonna do the exact same thing we did before. Numbers that multiply to make negative 18. And remember when you have negatives, you always have twice as many options because you can do one and negative 18 or negative one and positive 18. So someone else give me two numbers that multiply to negative 18. All right, six and three. So you can do six and negative three or negative six and positive three. The Mercedes says negative two and nine or two and negative nine. And I think that's it. Okay, so once we have all these, change all the multiply to plus. And here's good brush up on knowing your negatives. One plus negative 18 is negative 17. If it's reversed, positive. Six plus negative three is three. Negative six plus three is negative three. Negative two plus nine is seven. And two plus negative nine is negative seven. <sighs> Didn't mean to make the right answer last in both situations, but you guys did that. <laughs> nope, nope. This is not the right sign because ours is negative. So, boom. Two and negative nine. Okay, here's where things start to change a little bit more. So far, the only thing that's been different from the other factoring is that we did A times C instead of just C, right? So instead of just writing x plus two, x minus nine as our factors, which would not work, um, we have to do a couple extra steps. So my original is um, six x squared minus seven r equal minus three. I'm gonna rewrite that. Oh, whoops, nobody said anything to me about the fact that I have X in one place and R in another place. Come on, you guys. It's because the original for equation I used uh, said R, but then I changed it to X because I'm used to using X. Doesn't really matter, but you gotta be consistent. You can't, otherwise you're having two different variables. Okay. So what I've done here, minus seven X, I rewrote as minus nine X plus two X. You know how we've done combining like terms, right? You combine two different X's to make it just one, one X term. I basically did that backwards. I did the opposite of that. I took one X term and broke it into two. Where did I get these? Well, from here minus nine and two. And I knew that those would be the same as negative seven because that's how we found them in the first place. We needed two that added to negative seven. So negative nine plus two is negative seven. So that's why I broke that up the way I did. Okay. Any questions about how I broke this up? You'll see what I'm gonna do with it, but does anyone not understand how or why I rewrote 
well, how I was able to rewrite negative 7x as negative 9x minus, I mean, plus 2x. Any questions there? Okay. So now is when I do my factoring by groups. I'm going to factor 6x squared minus 9x. And then I'm going to factor 2x minus 3. So essentially, it's like what I did with that problem before. Let's see, I got to use a different color because I already used red. Here's a nice purple. Where I talked about um, four terms here, I'll put it above. And I can label them. And essentially, I have my four terms, just like in that first problem that I went over again. And just like I did, well, just like I showed you, I'm taking the first two and factoring them, and then the second two and factoring them. Okay. So, 6x squared minus 9x. So number one, six times x times x. Well, six is an even number. That means it can be factored. Nine is not an even number, but you probably know it can also be factored. Six is two times three, nine is three times three. And luckily that's where it stops. We do not have any, those are all prime numbers. We're good. Okay. So that is to say, this becomes two times three. This becomes three times three. So let's see what we have in common. Well, number two doesn't have a two, ironically, so that doesn't work, but they do both have one three. And they do both have one X. Number one has a second X, but number two doesn't. So we can't take that second X. Down here, number two, number two has a second three, but number one doesn't, so we can't take that. So what we have on the outside is 3x. And what we have on the inside is 2x and then minus, because this is a minus right here. And then what's on the second term, three. You might be noticing something at this point. Okay, down here with 2x minus three, for our second two terms, here's something weird. Well, number three, the third term has a two, but the fourth doesn't, so that doesn't count. The third term has an X, but the fourth doesn't, so that doesn't count. And the fourth term has a three, but the third doesn't, so that doesn't count. So that has nothing, <gasps> nothing to factor out. And when you have nothing to factor out, it's just a one. But the stuff in red is still on the inside. 2x minus, because that's right here, 3. So I hope what you guys have noticed is 
is that these both have this 2x minus 3 in them. That's exciting. Whoa. All right. So this has 3x on the front, and this has 1 on the front. So your final factors are, dun, 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 dun. hope you guys are excited to see this. So you might be thinking, 3x plus 1, where did you get that? I'll show you where I got that since you asked so nicely. I got the three X from here. I got the one from here. And the reason that I got plus as opposed to minus is because the one is positive. So it's plus one. And then Obviously, I got the 2x minus 3 from there. And that's my final factor. That is 6x squared minus 7x minus 3 factored. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, please. Any questions? Thus far? Mercedes and Guadalupe say so no questions. Anyone else want to contribute? Victor says no questions. But what I hear is people clapping and saying, encore, encore, we want another one. And I say, oh, you come on, you guys, I'm tired. I want to go home. But then they say, encore, please, another one. And I say, oh. Well, okay, if you insist, I'll do one more. Oh, you guys are just too much. Okay. All righty, let's see, let's see. Um. Okay, this is a good one. Almost messed that up. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Twelve x squared minus thirteen r plus three. So if we line it up, b don't forget the sign is negative thirteen. A is twelve. And C, don't forget the sign, is positive 3. And 12 times 3, as I'm sure we all know, is 36. I like doing ones with multiplying to 36 because there's a lot of factors there. So I need to think of numbers that multiply to 36.
four and nine. That's a good one. Six and six. Let's see, I think there's two more. There's two more. Guadalupe said three and 12, good. Last one. Thirty six is even, which means it's divisible by what's half of thirty six, you guys? Thirty six is even, which means it's divisible by two. So two times something is thirty six. Eighteen. Yes, there we go. Now here's a question. If I change these all to plus, I have a problem. None of these add to negative thirteen because all of these are positive numbers. A positive for a positive isn't going to be a negative. That's when you got to remember a negative times a negative is also a positive. So if your B is negative, but your AC is positive, the only way to make that happen is if both your numbers are negative. Here, these two numbers will multiply to be a positive 36 because they're both negative, but when they add, they'll be negative. Oops. So negative one plus negative 36 is negative 37, negative 13, negative 12, negative 15, negative 20. So negative 13, yay. And of course, none of the rest of these equal negative 13. All right. So negative four and negative nine. Okay. So next step is my rewrite. So if you recall, dang it, I did it again. You guys, I put R instead of X again. Nobody stopped me. The first and fourth terms stay the same, but now that middle term gets split up into minus four X, minus 9x. Okay. All right. So for our first, we can do 12 times x times x. Second is 4 times x. Third is nine times X and fourth is just three. But now we have to factor things. So 12, four, nine, three is three, right? We already know three is a prime number. It can't be factored. Twelve and four are even. Nine we did last time, so we should still remember that. No problemo. Hey, I said I wanted that red. Four, if you recall, 
is just two times two. And both of those, of course, are prime. And 12 is even, so that means it's divisible by two. And six, but this one we got to go a step further on because six is also even two and three. Once we're down to our twos and threes, we are in prime territory. So to go back here, 12 can be two times two times three. Four can be two times two. Nine can be three times three. So we're doing this factoring grouping with grouping. So just among the top two, what do they have in common? They both have a first two. Both have a second two. The first does, has a three, but the second does not. So cross off there. They both have a first X. And they both, they're the first one has a second X, but the second one doesn't. And then the second one doesn't have anything that the first one doesn't. So there's nothing to do there. So what's on the outside? Two times two is four, and then one X. And what's inside is a three and an X. And remember what I said to you, oops, that should be a minus, sorry. Yeah. Okay, finally. If everything's taken out, we just have a one. All right. Down here in the second two, they both have a three. And the second one has a second three. I mean, the third one is a second three, but the fourth one doesn't. And the third one has an X, but the fourth one doesn't. So what they both have is three. And this is three X and this is a plus, so plus one. Now you might be thinking, oh no, something went wrong. These don't look exactly the same because this has a minus and this has a plus. Well, the reason for that is because we have a minus right here. If you recall before, there was a plus between them. And so I could just plus them up right there. But, um, but now that's a minus. So the easy way to make these match up the way we want them to is essentially, and let me erase here. is essentially transfer that minus to the front. This works, it's okay, it's legal. And now we see that they match. So our final factors, 
four X minus three. Three X minus one. And I got the four X from here, the minus three from here, and the three X minus one from here. Questions. So again, my note there at the end was in a situation where you have the same thing in parentheses except one is plus and one is minus, you can move the minus to the outside. Make this smaller. In a situation where you have the same thing in parentheses, except one is plus and one is minus, you can move the minus to the outside. So then you have the minus included over here instead of messing up this stuff matching. Questions, comments, epiphanies, childhood traumas. spiritual experiences. Okay. Well, I think the overwhelming majority of you have not finished the assignment from yesterday, which it was just yesterday. Usually you have two days to do it, so I'm not mad. <laughs> if I was mad, I'd be out of luck because most of you haven't done any of the assignments. So whatever. Um, okay, I'm going to stop recording.